Now, the reason why we're investigating these polynomials is that polynomials are sort of a stepping stone to our larger question of series. What I really want to know is, what is the series expansion for e to the x? Now, one of the great advantages of series is that, for the most part, in the practical world, we don't necessarily compute the actual value of an infinite series, which, which is sort of like a polynomial with infinite number of terms, is what we're going to call a series. What we often do in practice is that we only compute the first five terms, the first 500 terms, the first 5 million terms, something like that, and we get this really, really good approximation to the value of the series, we hope, and that is going to be sufficient. So this is the approach that we're doing here. I showed us how we can approximate the first few terms the zeroth term, the first term, and the second term of e to the x. Now I want to try to do the function e to the x and compare it to an entire power series. So in other words, I want to say e to the x is some sum from n equal to zero up to infinity of x to the power of n cn, where cn are some coefficients, and I want to know what are they. What cn's have the property that that infinite series is just going to be equal to e to the x, at least about the value of x equal to zero. So let's use the same approach we did before, which is if we're going to say that these functions well coincide, we're going to have to want that the function values are equal at zero, we want the first derivatives equal to zero, the second derivatives, and if we're doing an, a, an infinite summation of things, why don't we keep this process? Let's demand that every single derivative has to be equal at the value of zero. So what I'm going to investigate is the nth derivative. So dn by dx to the n of e to the x, and I want to evaluate this at x equal to zero. So in other words, this represents the nth derivative of e to the x evaluated at zero. So let's try to be a little bit clever about how we're going to take this derivative. We're thinking we're going to take it term by term, but there's infinitely many derivatives, and most of them are going to go away. So we want to be clever about this. First of all, if I'm taking n derivatives, and, and I've got expressions that are like x1, x2, x3, all the way up to xn, and then beyond, all of the ones with powers less than x to the n are all going to be going to zero. Right? It's kind of like saying if I've got the, the taking five derivatives and I've got like an x to the fourth term, it's going to go to way to zero. The x to the third term is all going to go to way to zero. So if I'm taking n derivatives, everything less than x to the n is going to be going to zero. So there's a whole bunch of zeros, uh, zero plus zero plus dot 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 dot, a whole bunch of zeros. Then I get to the x to the n term. And if I think about taking n derivatives of it, what happens? Well, the n comes down for the first derivative, and I'm left with an n minus 1 up top. Then for the second derivative, the n minus 1 comes down, and then I'm left with an n minus 2 on the top. Then the n minus 3 comes down, and so forth. So what I'm left with is the constant cn. That's just a constant. It comes along for the ride. And then I have n factorial. That is the constant in front of x to the n if I take the derivative n times. And finally, I'm left with x to the power of 0, which is just 1. So this represents my nth term. And then if I look at the other terms, terms like n plus 1 or n plus 2 or x to the n plus 3, well, if I take n derivatives of those, what I'm left with is something times remaining powers of x. There's still remaining x's for all the larger terms. So if I plug in x equal to 0 for all of these larger terms, all of those are going to be equal to 0. So it's just a bunch more zeros going on beyond. In other words, this is just cn n factorial. And then on the left-hand side, I know what the nth derivative of e to the x is. It's just e to the x. And so if I plug in 0, I'm just going to get e to the 0, or in other words, 1 is equal to cn n factorial. And rearranging, I have cn is 1 over n factorial. And thus, what I get is that e to the x is the sum, n equal to 0 to infinity, plugging in for my cn of x to the n over n factorial. And this is going to be my series expansion for e to the x. And if we think about how we came up with this series expansion for e to the x, it was by demanding that the function, the first derivative, the second derivative, and all subsequent derivatives were always going to be equal for my series and for my function, and then I got this formula. Now the question then applies, when is this formula valid? I, I was taking derivatives term by term. I know that I'm allowed to do that 
within my radius of convergence, and that therefore I get a new series with the same radius of convergence. But I know that the radius of convergence, the ROC, well, it is going to be equal to infinity here. This is a series we studied before. We could use the ratio test to remind ourselves, but this converges everywhere. And so this, this power series that I've gotten, the sum of n equal to zero to infinity of x to the n over n factorial, that power series is equal to this function e to the x for all values of x, which is a really kind of a triumph. It's a, it's a massive triumph that we were doing a lot of attention at x equal to zero. We were saying they had to match at x equal to zero in their first derivative, second derivative, and so forth. But we didn't say anything about x equal to 100. We didn't say anything about x to the billion. We only demanded stuff about x equal to zero. And yet, we've gotten this formula that is true for every single value of x. This kind of series are referred to as Taylor series, and they have the following form that models what we just saw. If I have some function f of x, and my function f of x is represented by some power series c to the n, I'm going to put in the possibility of a center not at zero, so x minus a to the power of n, and that that we have that this is valid for, for some radius of convergence, x minus a being less than r, then the cn's have the following formula. They are given to be the nth derivative of the function f of x at the particular center, at the center of a, all divided out by that n factorial term. So in, in our previous example, the the nth derivative all at a was just the nth derivative of e to the x at zero, so the, the numerator was all one here. But you always get the divided out by the n factorial. And indeed, this is going to be our Taylor series, and we can find the power series representations of, of any sufficiently nice function, f of x, just by computing what these derivatives are, they're going to tell us what the coefficients, and then we can write down what the power series is going to be.